I registered the domain Mizco.net 15 years ago. And since then, I've designed, built, and launched 13 custom portfolios. This year, in 2024, I launched this. I will share with you the insights into my end-to-end -end strategy, design, and build process. So if you are thinking about either updating your portfolio or maybe even launching a new one for the new year, you'll be equipped with some juicy insights. I'm gonna break this process down into three key parts. First, we'll talk about the strategy, the design, and then the build. So when it came to the strategy, I was thinking about what has changed this year. Since I've been in the field for 15 years, I shouldn't be positioning myself the same way. Now, if I was, I'd probably be doing something wrong. So the messaging and the design needed to communicate something a little different in 2024. Now, as most of you know, I've been working as an in-house designer. I freelanced, I ran a fairly successful UX agency for the last six years. And now I spend all my time advising, investing in startups, and also teaching UX and UI design with a goal of expanding the topics into no-code tools, freelancing, marketing, business, and everything that I've achieved I want to be teaching. But I didn't want to confuse the visitor with all these things. So I decided to keep it pretty simple and just focus on the most important and relevant roles. So after a lot of thinking, I decided to position myself as a UX and UI designer and educator, keeping it really simple. And I left the rest of the explanation and my story for the about page and for the homepage as well. Another thing that has changed this year that I felt was important to cover was my approach to design and also business. Now, generally I'm a pretty easygoing and lighthearted person, but when it comes to business and the professional side of me, I'm very, what would you call it? Meticulous, logical, pragmatic, results driven, and even focused. This was important because I wanted the visual design language to represent this. I didn't want to have to say or tell too much about this. I wanted the design or when the visitor landed on my portfolio, I wanted them to feel that this was the type of service or outcome they will achieve when working with me. So now that you have a better idea of what I want to communicate, it's time for us to jump into the juicy part, the design. Starting with inspiration. I somewhat already knew which brands would actually reflect and represent the attributes or the characteristics that I want to communicate. Now have a quick think, which two brands do you feel like represent what I've just talked about? Now if you thought about Webflow and Vercel, that is exactly, those are the two brands that I believe represented me and I use them as inspiration. Hi, over here. Now you might be thinking, how did Mizco come to a conclusion about Webflow and Vercel? Was it just a gut feeling? Well, let me share with you my process. So when it comes to building a brand, the first thing I like to think about is, how do I want the person to feel when they engage with the brand? For example, visiting the website. So the very first thing I like to do is actually look for visual inspiration and more specifically find interior designs that reflect what I want to achieve. So as you can see over here, we have Pinterest and I've searched for sleek, professional, modern interior design and the color scheme of black. As you can see with all these images and photos, they all really convey a very similar 
feeling or vibe. And it might be a little bit different for everyone, but this is the feeling that I want to go for. I want it to feel a little bit edgy, a little bit exclusive, professional, slight edginess with maybe a pop of color, as you can see, that contrasts against the muted grays and blacks. But as you can see, it's a very consistent theme. And this is just a personal choice, but this is the vibe that I'm looking to go for. So if we go ahead and take these characteristics of these interior designs, dark, some nice high contrast colors, only used in very small places, very professional, a sense of exclusivity, all those. If we bring that into web design, even though it's not the exact representation on the Webflow website, but you can see that we're going for a darker vibe. For me, it brings a little bit of this exclusive industry leading confidence in the marketplace. They've got a little bit of a splash of accents that really pop against the dark black and the darkness of this website. But I also like that in a lot of these designs that there are very straight and angular lines used throughout the interior designs. So you can see straight lights over here, very sharp corners. And we can see that Webflow adopts that similar style as well. So everything is quite sharp as you can see. So very bold fonts, sharper corners. And we go to Vercel, which is a very similar type of platform. It's all about development, pushing your production code to a server and getting your website live very quickly. As you can see, very sharp corners, straight lines, and the theme is quite consistent. This is exactly what I want to achieve, but obviously with my own little spin to it. But that's how I decided on the Webflow and the Vercel direction. As a portfolio, it's a very personal piece of work. I believe it should always feature you some way or somehow on the web page. So I thought I'd lean into my newfound skills as a YouTuber for the last two years and bring in some motion and video into my design. Now, when it came to the designing, I did a little different this time around. I approached it with a design in code type of mindset. This means you don't actually design in a design app, but you do it all within code or in a node code tool. Now, I would only recommend someone to do this if they have a lot of experience in design. So I started in Figma, but my goal was not to perfect it in the app. Come over here. Let me show you the behind the scenes of how messy my Figma file got throughout this project. Please remember, this approach with a design in code mindset is probably more catered for designers with a little bit more experience and they know how to build their own designs. Now, if you don't know how to do that, I definitely would not recommend you to going down this approach. As you can see in my file, I already had a very basic style guide that I was going to use throughout the designs, mainly because I want to keep my topography consistent, the buttons consistent, and just some basic components that I'll be utilizing on my portfolio. Now, once again, we're not building an application. It's just a personal portfolio. So I didn't really need a lot of components. As you can see, when I am designing in code, my Figma files are never perfect because really the goal of this process in Figma is just to get the ideas down on paper because I will perfect it in Webflow or in code later on. So my goal was just to try get a good sense of where everything is at, what are the general uh, guidelines, how do I want to structure content. So it's a very rough approach. Now I did not clean up my files before presenting this. I wanted to show you exactly what this looked like in my design file in a real project. So you can see I've just duplicated a lot of components just to quickly get a sense of how I wanted things to be laid out. Then if I zoom out, you can see even the about page was not finalized at all. It was just a quick dump of content. My goal here was just to understand how am I going to structure the template? So obviously a header, how would I structure the template for a content page? And I just wanted to see how this would be then applied to my testimonials page. You can see once again, just a very general rough idea of how I wanted to lay this information out. Then also on the partnership page, you can see this was a page dedicated to brands that want to partner with me. But as you can see, I am utilizing templates very effectively. I don't want to recreate new pages, new entire pages for, an, uh, for a new section. I am trying to reutilize different templates for different pages so I can minimize on the work. 
Then we have testimonials. Oh, so this is actually services. And this is where I was documenting all my different services that I provide. You might be thinking, wow, Ms. Co, how is your file so messy? It's so inconsistent. Your designs are not finalized. Nothing is uh, named correctly. But remember, because I'm going to be the developer, I'm the one who's actually going to build it. I have all the answers in my mind. So if you are working on a project and you are going to work with other developers who are going to build your designs, you need to make sure that all your ideas are on the page and documented well, because they need to understand how to build it. But once again, because I'm going to build it, then I don't need the designs to be perfect in Figma because the perfect ideas are all up here. So when it came to building the website or the portfolio, it was pretty obvious. I was using Webflow. Now, prior to 2018, I used to code all my websites from scratch, but it doesn't really make sense anymore because Webflow is just so good. It saves me so much time and so much headaches. So hands down for Webflow. Let me show you the process in building this website in Webflow. So as you can see over here, we have the Webflow interface, very similar to Figma, just a little bit more technical. Layers on the left, design panel on the right hand side. But the first thing I did when I was building out this website was over in the pages, I go down to style guide. I brought through that style guide just to make sure that I had all the components and the topography set up so I can be consistent when I'm building out this website. As you can see, all my headings, my different size paragraphs, some very basic components such as a large button and also a smaller button and also the stars for an input field and a form. Mainly because this is a portfolio, we don't need a lot of components. I just use the main ones that I needed throughout the website. Once I had set up my style guide, before building out any pages, I actually did something a little bit different. I went to the CMS and I actually created a set of collections. If you're thinking, what is a collection? Think of it as a database or maybe a component in Figma if you don't know anything about the web development world. So the reason why I did this is because throughout my portfolio, there was information that was being reutilized in different areas. And I did not want to go and manually have to update them later down the track. So instead, I created a collection. So as you can see over here, we have a collection called Clients. And if I click into clients, you can see I have 30 of my somewhat favorite clients that I've worked with over the long period that I've been in the industry. If I click into one of the clients, Spaceship, you can see that we have business name information, custom fields for the client details, some logos, their testimonial, a client photo, and also some tags. Now, this is extremely useful because I only need to update this information in one place but this will automatically update it throughout the entire website if I decide to do so. So if I go ahead and click into another example, maybe top better, you can see we have the business name, client details, logos, photos, tags, and also their LinkedIn and other uh, details for the client or business. So once all the collections were set up for clients, you can see I have one for services, I have one for service categories, I have one for filters as well, and I'm also building out a collection for courses as I plan to do another update to my portfolio later down the track. But if we go to pages and I go to the home page, you can see I've actually gone ahead and built out the design of my portfolio and it actually looks quite different. So if we actually go to the live website, you can see it's actually quite different to the design. I've got a bit of a sidebar here. I've got updated information, more transitions, new sections as well. But as I mentioned, this is a design in code or design in Webflow type of approach. Now, when it came to the responsive side of this design or this project, I needed to actually create a larger custom breakpoint, mainly because when I head over to my uh, normal desktop and I go over to my testimonials page, you can see I actually wanted to implement a sidebar to filter through all the different testimonials but on a general breakpoint of 1280 pixels, there was not enough space for the actual filters. So I went ahead and created a custom breakpoint for 1280 and above. And you can see on this breakpoint or on this viewport size, we can then see an actual filter. So if I go ahead and visit the actual website, you can see from here, we can go and filter through all the different testimonials based on the different tagging system that we created in the collections. 
Now, this is custom functionality that I had to go beyond Webflow to implement onto my portfolio. But once again, I am a product UX and UI designer by trade. So I wanted my portfolio to bring through some of those familiar interfaces that we generally design for our clients or for our stakeholders. So if you notice on my portfolio, I do have a bit of a little sidebar on the left-hand side. Generally, that is a collapsed side menu that you see on a dashboard design. And when we go over to my testimonials, instead of just showcasing all the testimonials, I wanted to once again bring through some familiar UI such as filters to make my portfolio a little bit more personalized for my audience. And on the 2nd of January of 2024, I finally hit publish and now we're live. So what do you think? Give me your most honest thoughts and feedback in the comments below. If we get enough, I might actually go ahead and implement one or two of my favorite suggestions. Now it's really important, as I said, I always try to limit myself and give myself one to two weeks to just focus on my portfolio because it doesn't actually give me a lot of value, but I do enjoy the process of designing and building something from scratch. Now, hopefully you were able to learn a lot and actually take away some practical insights to apply to your very own design portfolio. Now, with that said, I will see you in another video very soon.